So in this video, we're going to be covering the new iFlight 120 RS with 4,200 kV motors. They come in different flavors and I've tested two so far. However, the first one, I didn't have a great experience because I installed the wrong size battery and I ended up burning a motor. However, this is the lowest kV version of their toothpick model. And as you can tell, it is exactly the same frame. However, what they're doing here is they're using a 3D printed canopy and they don't provide you with the upper plate like this one here. So in this video, we're going to be covering the overall tune, the performance, the flight video, the execution, and also the ease of use right out of the box. How quickly did I get this to run? So let's get started. So iFlight's been releasing a lot of things lately, and especially these toothpick class micro quadcopters. They're giving you a bunch of different flavors so you can choose the one to your specific needs or your liking. Now, personally, I prefer the mid-range KV with three SHVs. And what does that mean? Well, I prefer the motors to be anywhere between 7,500 KV up to 8,700 KV. Those are really great because they'll run great on 2S and it'll also run great on a 3S. However, 4,200 KV for me personally on a 3S, it just felt too slow and heavy. Now, it wasn't so slow and underpowered to the point where I had to keep fighting it to keep it in the air. It'll keep its attitude. It'll keep holding in the air just flying. Very sharp on turns, but I, this is rated for a 4S. So if you really want to enjoy this one's true performance, you're going to have to look for some 4S HVs, or you might have to just stick two 2Ss two on here and go ahead and uh, fly it that way. However, I didn't have any. All I took was three Ss with me, and it felt okay. It felt like a 7,500 kV motor on a 2S. That's the way, that's the characteristics that I could put it, especially with its weight, because some toothpicks are slightly lighter than this one. Now, if we start from the motors and make our way inside, now these are running the B motor 1104-4200 kV motors here. They are low kV, so they are expecting you to put about a 4S in this guy, and this thing should handle a 4S just fine. Now, the flight characteristics on a 3S with a low kV such as this one, I'm considering a low kV, especially for this uh, class of micro toothpicks or micro quadcopters, it flew like an 8,000 or 7,500 kV on a 2S, uh, but with a, with, felt a little bit heavier than usual because usually all the other ones are like 44 grams and something of that nature. This one's a, gr a great example here. Uh, this is a 1102-8,500 kV. 2S is slightly outperforming this one. Uh, when this one's on a 3S, but then again, it comes down to the KV. If we move away from the motors and go down the frame here, the frame is really great, actually. It's starting to become, possibly will become one of my favorite toothpick sized frames here because I've gotten a previous one before from iFlight and I've replaced the motors to put the Flywoo 1103 7600 kV motors. This is my favorite kV motor for toothpicks because it just gives you so much flexibility between a 2S and as well as a 3S. And uh, I find this to be an absolute amazing flyer. It needed a little bit of tune with the new motors, but other than that, it worked really great. So the overall frame can fly really great for toothpicks without vibrations. So what I'm trying to get at here is the overall frame design and the, the you know the hardness and the way it flexes and everything is really great because you can get a really nice tune out of this and have it fly great. Unlike those plastic ones that there's no way in hell you'd probably get that jello out of your video feed. But in this case, it looks really great, especially on the FPV feed, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Now, if we move to the internal stack here, this is slightly different because they've added the connectors for the motor. So it makes it very easy for someone to replace a motor. Unlike the previous one, the previous one uh, didn't have the connectors. So I don't know which models have the connectors and which don't. But for me personally, I don't mind. I think it is exactly the same ESC. However, they've extended the PCB in order to add female connectors. So you can easily remove and plug in a motor if anything were to happen to it. Now, the overall motors, I'm actually quite surprised, are pretty strong in terms of durability compared to other motors I've flown so far. So in that perspective, it's really great to know. But then again, this is not a definitive test to tell you that they are really durable. But if they handle a couple of my crashes, then I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now for the flight controller, they're using an F405 flight controller, which is more than enough for such a toothpick. It's great that they're not using the old cheap F3s. So we are in the mid range of flight controllers. If you might say you do have your full OSD and everything. Not only that, they also provide you with the VTX and everything is, and everything here is also so soft mounted to in order for you to reduce the amount of vibrations that could come from the frame and affect the gyro and give you these really nasty wobbles and jitters and stuff. So we're not getting any of that. And that's a really great thing. And also the tune was really good out of the box. 
The VTX is absolutely phenomenal. Especially in the bandos that I fly, not every VTX could perform as good as this one, which I'm really impressed with and I really love. So the whole stack, the internal stack of iFlight is a really great toothpick stack. It is slightly heavier, it is pretty big, compared to something like this where everything just comes in uh, one board here. But I think the overall longevity of this type of stack will last a bit longer than those all-in-one boards. But at the end of the day, it depends on what happens to your micro quadcopter or toothpick here. Now, as you can tell here, we do have a 3D printed canopy, um, which is really great. That reduces the chance of breaking and it does take a lot of imp It could take most of the impact and absorb it and give that little flex here and there. So you have less chance of breaking the carbon here, which is really great to have. And also, if you take a look at the execution of the receiver, it's really well thought out. It's even designed in there to hold into place. So when you receive it, basically, all you got to do is uh, flip this guy upside down and you can easily, even the placement where the bind button is, is very accessible. It's in that corner right there. So you just hold that in, plug in your USB, and then you could bind and start flying. Now there's something to take into consideration also when you purchase this. Now if you know how to put propellers on, you're going to have to put these reversed. So they're coming, they're giving them to you reversed. So usually we'd have... This is the low side right now, which is on the inside because now they're reversed. So uh, you'd want the high side to be on the outside when you hold them straight like that. So this is the high side and this is the low side because they're reversed. And obviously if it was just the normal type of quadcopter, which for example, like this one here, the high side is on the inside on all of them and reverse the high side would be on the outside again. So for the propellers, I use these HQ props that came. They give you two sets of these props inside the package, which is really cool. And they also give you these antenna protectors. They're not installed, otherwise it wouldn't fit in the packaging. So that you just grab it and just plug it in the hole and then just uh, route your receiver's antenna through. And, and that's it, really. It was a really pleasant experience to get going and just start flying. The tune was great. I have nothing to complain about the tune. All I have to do, I, I can't even complain about the performance, to be honest, because when you think about it, this is a 4S. However, on a 3S, it still performed really great. Now, in terms of features, it also has smart audio and just about everything you need. MMC export, so you can easily replace the VTX antenna if it breaks. Um, this, the, the placement, the secu you know, it's, it's kind of secure here, but it does tend to come out of this 3D printed part. So if you take a closer look here, you see, usually you'll find it like this. So you kind of always want to put it back in. Um, or maybe put a little tiny super glue or hot glue just to, you know, just a little dab to hold it into place so you don't have it wiggling around and possibly coming off and, you know, getting in a pop psych. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Maybe you probably want to bend it back a little. So if you're going to be hitting really tight gaps, this doesn't really affect you. But again, it's just, you see, just a couple crashes here and there, little vibrations, it'll come right out. Uh, it's not a big problem, but it's just something to take note of here uh, because it could be pretty annoying that if you rip this and you don't have another one, you're going to be grounded until you order more antennas. So keep that in mind. Now the camera they're using, they're using a Cadex camera, which is also really great. And this is what everyone's using right now. Uh, very light. It's again, there's like a mid, it's like a budget premium camera. And they're just giving you really good cameras with low latency at a really great price, especially for the companies like iFly and some other ones that are currently creating uh, little quadcopters as well. So the overall performance of this on a 3S is okay. Uh, I think it's meant to be on a 4S. However, I don't have any 4S, but I might revisit this when I purchase more 4S HVs. I never expected I'll be flying 4S on a toothpick. Uh, but again, this comes back to you at the end of the day. I might put two, two S's in there to make a 4S, uh, but it is totally flyable on a 3S. You're not going to have to fight it. And uh, it, the overall tune and, you know, nothing weird happened and it's something really great. And I'm guessing the ESC is handling itself very well, so there's no mid-throttle oscillations. But again, these are very low KV motors. And, um, you know, that's all I got to say, guys. So I'll have everything linked down below. I'll also have a coupon for you if you wanted to go ahead and purchase this. Um, I think, personally, I might change out the motors. I might look into some mid-range B-rotor motors, like the 8,500 KV. I think that would suit this much better, kind of like what I did here with this one right here. The frame, over, the frame design overall is really easy, and it's a really easy quad to tune. Uh, which I, I really like because usually these can be a bit of a nightmare sometimes and I'm leaving you guys with me in the field with my flight footage and a couple crashes and I'll see you in the next one guys. Peace out. All right So now we're gonna go ahead and test out the iFlight little toothpick. This is running 4000 kV motors and I'm guessing it's supposed to run 4s Because um, it just feels like a kind of like I would say like an 8000 kV motor on 2s right now the tune's really nice, really smooth. It doesn't seem like it has jello currently. I think I'm on the wrong. No, I'm not. You can see it's not a speed demon, but it might be just efficient. It's 
it's really well tuned and um it turns the it turns really sharply like like it turns really sharp responsiveness it's not that responsive in terms of motor power i would say like i'm afraid to hit the roof gaps like let's go take an example here i might break it from right now which are these here because it takes me a while to get back or just stop where i want to stop so it becomes unpredictable there's some prop wash with like a i like i prefer you know it's a personal preference here i don't have any four s's for this right now because i think it'll run for us it'll probably be amazing but um on three s it's just uh it's very very cruise efficient you see how long it took me to kind of come back to or just basically stop that's what i'm trying to say here just stop i need i need a lot of space i mean if the battery is going to go any lower it's going to be much more difficult for me uh-oh all right we're still on the same battery here um it might have a little jello now because one of the propellers kind of just bent, bent back into place here. They're really smooth, but it just feels really underpowered. Especially if you want to do something like this. See how long it took me to kind of stop and then get where I want to be. And usually I'm flying between 50 to 75% throttle right here. That's why I set up the throttle so you can kind of see it. No noise, no oscillations at high RPM. I'm using the default propellers that it comes with right now too, so that probably has a big role to do with it. Flight time isn't something crazy. I was expecting maybe something crazy, but no, barely three minutes at times, especially with the, you know, just regular flying like what I'm doing here. Nothing special, you gotta watch out for those wires. You know, the, the power of this just makes me wanna just cruise more than doing anything fast and crazy. That's all I kind of want to do here. There we go. But it's still, it's like, it's much more difficult for me. Uh oh, we don't want to make it in there. You see that? Usually another one, I would just stop in exactly where I wanted to once I punch it. So I'm gonna come bring this one in for a landing. It's really nice, very smooth, but I definitely change out the motors on this. Um, definitely, at least for me. Or maybe I should get it some uh, 4S. I think that's its true performance. So, but this is what you could expect on 3S currently.